Okay, let's get serious, people. In the past few years, we have seen many releases of new iPhones that always had impressive specs worth their heavy price tags. But this year, it seems a bit different. According to the rumor mill, the new iPhone 14 coming out later this year will not be much better than its sister, the iPhone 13. So in this video, I'll explain why I believe the new iPhone 14 might be a bad buy. Have we reached the peak? From the outset, let me clarify that some of the opinions discussed in this video come from loyalists who already own the latest iPhone 13 and will definitely buy the next iteration despite its updated price tag, and others are coming from the skeptics who are still on the fence. So my reasoning for this controversial opinion is well balanced. Comparing the new iPhone 14 with the iPhone X and XS models, there will obviously be noticeable leaps in camera technology and the processor speed. But with Apple significantly slowing down its improvements over the last couple of years, the question needs to be asked. Have we reached the peak for the iPhones? It's a well-known fact that smartphones are getting better and better with time. Every year brings with it new innovations, processing power, more memory, more software intelligence, higher resolution, and other advanced features. Even cheaper smartphones have high-end features that were previously only reserved for much more expensive phones like the iPhone. This is the reason why the world of smartphones is getting more and more competitive. The last decade saw significant innovations in the iPhone, including the first selfie camera, the first 3D touchscreen, and even security features such as Face ID. But now we are only getting incremental progress. As technology slowly reaches a zenith, progress will only slow down even further. Apple didn't mention the iPhone 14 during this week's WWDC 2022 event. Although this is hardly surprising given the company's standard refusal to discuss any product it hasn't announced. But according to well-established industry sources, the difference in specifications between the iPhone 13 and the 14 will be minimal. There are some talks of a significant increase in camera technology, which I will explore later in the video. But other than that, there will only be a few other minor changes, and mostly superficial. So the new iPhone 14 won't be too much of a technological leap from the older versions. Obviously, there will be some updates to the chipset. Apple will likely release the new iPhone 14 Pro model with the new A16 processor. Still, the standard 14 and 14 Max models will most likely retain a variant of the older A15 processors. So have we reached the peak with the iPhone? No, I believe we haven't reached the peak yet. Of course not. Technology is still steadily improving and much scope is still remaining. But we are coming pretty damn close to it. The older iPhone models like 12 or 13 are pretty impressive machines and will still be able to perform most of their functions for years to come. That being said, the next question that needs to be asked is whether you should upgrade to the new iPhone 14 and will it justify the increased price tag? Is it worth the extra money? How do I know the new iPhone will cost more? In case you missed this week's WWE, WWDC 2022 event, it was unveiled that the new MacBook Air, powered by the company's new Apple M2 processor, will sell at a $200 premium over what the MacBook Air M1 sells for. This coupled with the fact that there is a global shortage of semiconductors, and the overall prices of components have skyrocketed in the last year. So you can be sure that the iPhone 14's base price will increase by at least $100, if not more. So will the iPhone 14 be worth the extra money? To be honest, I don't think so. Unless the primary primary purpose of your iPhone purchase is to click pictures and record 8K videos. Let me explain. The iPhone 13 series came out with many differentiating factors. For example, the 13's Pro model came with an extra telephoto camera, LiDAR, ProMotion display, stainless steel frame, higher storage, additional RAM, and other minor upgrades. These upgrades were enough to convince people to spend that extra money and get it. However, this year rumors say that the iPhone 14 will be a slightly better version of the previous iPhone. The biggest one is definitely definitely the higher 48 megapixel camera in the Pro version. Apple has always stuck to its guns and never increased its camera's megapixels from 12, even though the rest of the market competitors have experimented with insane numbers such as 108 megapixels. So did Apple finally do this because it ran out of other improvements to make in its new iPhone 14 Pro? I believe it could very well be the case. However, it has to be said that increasing the megapixel count doesn't necessarily mean better quality of pictures and videos. A lot depends on the overall processing power of the system. But this change will finally allow iPhones to capture 8K video, which Samsung phones have already had from a couple of years ago. I also believe that given the iPhone's superior post-processing software capabilities, it will undoubtedly do a better job than Samsung. But how significant is an upgrade like that for its regular users, especially since the iPhone 13's camera is not just great, but class-leading despite only having 12 megapixels? The other major upgrade is cosmetic in nature. With the iPhone 14, it seems that Apple has finally 
Ridley decided to remove the notch and replace it with a circle and a pill-shaped design to house the dot projector and the front camera. This will undoubtedly increase the dimensions of the overall screen area, but then again, it is nothing we haven't seen before in other phones. The pill shape was introduced by the Huawei P50 last year, and Apple is now reduced to copying the design as it is perhaps the most efficient way of placing the front camera while maximizing the screen area. So far, the upgrades don't seem convincing enough to demand the extra $100 increase in the base price. As I already mentioned, the processor will only get an upgrade on the Pro version, so the standard iPhone 14 will be sharing the same processor as the 13. Can you imagine, even with a full year difference between the 13 and 14, we get to see the regular 14 models with the same A15 chip? Now that really shows how slow Apple's improvements in the iPhone are getting each year. I mean, with the pedigree of achievements that this company boasts of, this is getting somewhat embarrassing. So from my point of view, the iPhone 13 will still be equally powerful as the iPhone 14 base models. With its A15 Bionic, Apple finally fixed the perennial battery drainage issue so I can fully enjoy my iPhone for more extended periods. It's also powerful enough to run most of the modern apps I throw at it and will probably serve me well for a few more years to come. So if you ask me, I can't justify the extra price that Apple will most certainly tag on when it releases the iPhone 14 lineup later this year in October. Some might say I'll compromise on the better camera and the new notch design. That's why I mentioned earlier that if your goal is to shoot 8K resolution videos with your new iPhone, by all means, you should go for the upgrade. But if that's not your priority, then the iPhone 13 does a hell of a job with its exciting specs, and you probably won't miss the new iPhone 14 in your day-to-day -day usage. Other speculations there are a few more speculations about the new iPhone 14 lineup that can't be discounted offhand. For example, some sources say that the phones will likely get bigger than the previous lineup. This is not a bad upgrade for people who like bigger phones. Bigger phones certainly have advantages and I believe Apple would be wise to fully use them. Industry rumors also claim that the new iPhone 14 will feature more memory and 6E Wi-Fi connectivity. Now this is definitely good news. More memory is always welcome and 6E Wi-Fi connectivity is the upcoming standard that enables a smoother browsing experience by delivering four times higher bandwidth and 75% lower latency. The only drawback I see is that you'll need a 6E Wi-Fi enabled router to get the most out of this feature. And these routers can be expensive. Since you're already spending a lot more on your new iPhone 14, would you want to spend more on a router? Maybe Apple can start selling their own 6E Wi-Fi enabled routers. And knowing Apple, they probably will. Oh, and one more thing. Finally, let me also mention that I didn't speak of the software side of things in this video, since the software updates can be used equally in the older models as well, so I believe that wasn't required for the topic of this video. Anyways, Apple will always find a way to justify their new iPhone releases and charge extra money for them. It's up to the individual customers, like us, to decide if we should reward such actions. And this year, I don't find any compelling reason why Apple should be charging more for its new iPhone 14s. That's why I think the iPhone 14 will be a bad buy. Do you agree with my analysis? Either way, let me know in the comment section below and show the channel some love by subscribing and hitting that like button. See you in the next one.